Good evening. Well, last night I told you that I'd received the subject access data I'd requested from Coots Bank, the bank who cancelled my account. Now, bear in mind, this is important. This is not just about Coots, and it's not just about me, because NatWest is part of the same banking group, and they have 19 million customers. So the culture that exists within these organisations, how they treat their customers, matters to a huge number of people in this country. Now, they had a deadline of 30 days to respond, and on the 30th day, interestingly, after close of business, it arrived in my inbox. It is 40 pages long. It contains 1,700, 1,017,801 words, and that actually is a redacted number. There's an awful lot here that I've not been given, just things that directly affect me. It has linked to it at least 83 separate news and media articles, every single one of them against me. The word Brexit is mentioned 86 times. I get the feeling the corporate banks will never forgive anybody involved with the campaign. And appallingly, the word Russia is mentioned 144 times. Yes, all part of the Russia hoax. The word racist is used 12 times. Well, I suppose... We could have expected that from a group who are filled with malice and the very special kind of prejudice that you only get from the upper middle classes with metropolitan views. The word pep, politically exposed person, is used ten times in the document. Well, you might have seen the BBC coverage just over a week ago. A source from Coots told their business editor, Simon Jack, that the reason my account was closed is because I fell below the financial threshold required to hold an account. Yet this document, this document, which is from the 17th of November last year, which was the meeting at which the decision was taken, I would be exited in 2023, this document proves that was wrong and reveals that the real reason I was cancelled. So what really happened? My request for data shows me this November meeting of the Coots Wealth Reputational Risk Committee. And they discussed how they could exit me from banking with them. Well, the extracts I've got from the minutes of that committee are really pretty damning. Quote, the committee did not think continuing to bank Nigel Farage was compatible with Coots, given his publicly stated views that were at odds with our position as an inclusive organisation. Their recommendation was that once I'd paid off my mortgage, which I did in early March of this year, that my Coots account should be shut down. In April, I received a telephone call to say my account was being closed. I received a letter confirming the account would be closed, no reasons given whatsoever. It's only when that I complained to the chairman that I got a phone call from Coots saying it was being done for commercial reasons. Well... On the 17th of November last year, that clearly wasn't the case. Alongside the minutes from the meeting, I was also sent the papers presented to the committee. And it is a compilation of information that Coots put together on me, none of it positive, and it starts by saying, my economic contribution to my bank account is sufficient to retain on a commercial basis. Are you watching this, BBC? This completely tears apart the lie that they were told. They say, also in the report, there is a lot of adverse press about me. Well, there's a lot of good press too, but a list of links is provided to articles from, and you've guessed it, The Guardian, The Independent. Subjects include Russia, pro-Putin, Russia Today links, racism, xenophobia, Black Lives Matter, anti-Semitism, climate denying, anti-net zero, gender issues, fascism, and supporting an anti-vax stance. I mean, frankly... It couldn't be more negative, and much of this has been disproved in a court of law when Aaron Banks recently, comprehensively, won his libel action against that journalist from The Guardian who really pushed, fostered the Russia hoax. You see, the establishment couldn't accept Brexit, they couldn't accept the result, they did everything they can to try and find a reason, and they believed it was Russia, but it simply isn't true, and it really is time the Russia hoax ended. Examples of direct things they linked to are when I called Grant Shapps a globalist. Somehow, calling someone who's a Remainer and a globalist 
For them, that was code for anti-Semitism. I have to be honest, I didn't even know he was Jewish, but never mind. Advocating for the government to leave the ECHR. I mean, this is something else that is on their very, very long list and crime sheet. And, worst of all, the endorsements of this man. A man behind Brexit and a man who led brilliantly the United Kingdom Independence Party in this fight and won despite all odds. Mr. Nigel Farage. Yes, you've guessed it, the 45th president of the USA, Donald Trump, and he's mentioned 14 times in this document. Another extraordinary sin is that I've been backing Novak Djokovic and interviewing his family. And, and there I was in Djokovic's trophy room in Belgrade, talking to his uncle whilst he was under effective house arrest in Australia. Apparently this is something else that is on the long, long charge sheet. You would think reading this document, actually, that, that I was getting, you know, getting ready, they were the prosecution for a very, very important criminal trial. And, I mean, try this for size. Even when I retweeted this clip of Ricky Gervais, which, which they describe in the report as a transphobic comedy sketch. Will you watch it? You make your minds up. The old-fashioned women. Oh, God. You know, the ones with wombs. Oh. <laughs> Those <laughs> dinosaurs. Oh. No, I love the, the new women. I know the new women. They're great, aren't they? The, you know, the new ones we've been seeing lately. The, the ones with beards and <laughs> They're as good as... They're as good as gold. I love them. No, it's the old-fashioned. And now the old-fashioned, they're like, oh, they want to use our toilets. Why shouldn't they use your toilets? For ladies. They are ladies. Look at their pronouns. <laughs> what about this person that isn't a lady? Well, his penis. <laughs> Her penis, you <laughs> bigot. Well, I still think it's brilliant, and I was very happy to tweet it out. I just hope for Ricky Gervais's sake, that he doesn't bank with coots, as some people have suggested that perhaps he might. But let's move on to the more serious issue, the Russia hoax. Throughout the report, they mention Russian quotes like, while it is accepted that no criminal convictions have resulted... Oh, that's nice of them. Commentary and behaviours that do not align to the bank's purpose and values have been demonstrated. The memo state at least nine times, that there is no evidence of links to Russia. They've even run checks on my transactions to make sure that's the case. And yet, Labour MP Sir Chris Brandt, using parliamentary privilege, his false allegations in the House of Commons are mentioned twice and are seen as a big risk factor in my debanking. Quote, in making the decision... Risk factors including accusations of links to Russia, controversial public statements which were felt to conflict with the bank's purpose. Well, what is the bank's purpose? Well, we had a look at this. The bank's purpose is to champion potential, helping people, families and businesses to thrive. Coots clients are trailblazers, pioneers, the disruptors and challengers who helped to shape the fabric of the UK. Well, I think, actually, the truth is, if you're a disruptor, Coots may not want you. Let me read some more direct quotes, if I can, from their analysis. We have reviewed the account activity of both NF and Thornimerside Limited, his company, and can see nothing that appears to be a payment in relation to Russia, work in Russia, or anything pro-Putin. So there it is, in black and white. They write... No payments in relation to Russia, and yet they still mention Russia 144 times. They say the values NF actively and publicly promotes champions do not align with the banks. Mm. Particularly given the manner in which he states those views, deliberately using extreme, hateful and emotive language. At best, he is seen as xenophobic and pandering to racists, and at worst he is seen 
as xenophobic and racist. I mean, I said to you at the start of all of this, this is absolutely vitriolic stuff. He is considered by many to be a disingenuous grifter. Really? <laughs> and is regularly the subject of adverse media. It goes on to say, being associated to NF presents a material and ongoing reputational risk to the bank. The view is that NF has not broken any law, has the right to free speech, oh, that's nice of them, and is plight to staff. Gosh, that must have shocked them as they think I'm clearly some sort of monster. They also add, a decision to exit may result in NF using his platform on GB News social media to air his grievances. Well, they're not so much grievances that I'm airing, and I'm not doing this just for me. I'm doing it for the thousands of people who've had their bank accounts closed and who knows how many more as time goes on. It's clear to me that NF has and projects xenophobic, chauvinistic and racist views. I agree we should consider exit to coincide with the end of the mortgage term and on a long glide path that reduces the risk of counter-criticism. And one line that may well come back to haunt them. They say, although he does not align with our views, is likely to be the same for a number of the bank's customers. Well, you bet your bottom dollar. I bet there are 50% or so of Coots customers who will be pretty appalled by how they've behaved. And I wonder how many of the 19 million customers that are there at NatWest would approve of somebody having their account closed down for doing nothing that is illegal, for speaking freely in a society in which we're supposed to do so. I wonder how many of them will have concerns. Now, we did, of course, ask Coots for a comment, and a spokesperson said, our ability to respond is restricted by our obligations to client confidentiality. confidentiality. Decisions to close accounts are not taken lightly and take into account a number of factors, including commercial viability, reputational considerations, and legal and regulatory requirements. Well, there you are. Ah, I have to say that it isn't just coots. Actually, this runs deep through our corporate culture. It really, really does. And I'm going to ask tonight, are you next? Let me know whether you're worried. Farage at gbnews.com. And I think you should be, because it's been announced by Refinitiv, one of the big global agencies that banks go to to check out our creditworthiness. It's been announced that Refinitiv will now work with banks in this country, to monitor the social media posts of its customers. And now, with AI and various technology, they can measure every Facebook post you put out if you're a client of one of our banks. And if you don't align to their so-called values and views, well, you could be for the chop, too. One piece of good news that I think has come out of this is Andrew Griffith, Conservative Member of Parliament for Arundel and South Downs, and who currently holds the government post of Economic Secretary to the Treasury, and he is the City Minister. And he has said, there will be progress on reforms to banking rules in the coming weeks, aimed squarely at this issue. Well, thank you very much indeed, Andrew Griffiths. And just bear in mind with all of this that last year the banks made a profit in this country of a staggering £35 billion. Oh, we're all uh, too ready to criticise BP and Shell and others when their profits come out. The banks are making a fortune. And when it comes to the purpose of Coots and that group, I would suggest this. They are 38.6% owned by you and me, owned by the taxpayer. We bailed these people out in 2008 when, through their greed and stupidity, they came close to bringing down the entirety of the financial system. Our taxes went up as a direct result of saving these banks. And yet, they seem to be more concerned about promoting their own metropolitan values than they are about making sure that, actually, we get our stake back in good order. It's a twisted sense of priorities. It is, it is absolutely metropolitan elite prejudice. I'm pretty appalled and disgusted with this. I could have just gone quietly. I could have just said nothing. Because in many ways, as they acknowledge in the report, it's been slightly embarrassing for me to say these things. And no doubt does huge damage to my own creditworthiness. Going on from here, you know, the question on the form. Have you been refused an account? Have you had an account closed? But I'm not just doing this for me. I'm doing it because I'm really fearful 
that if we continue down this route, we'll finish up with a, a Chinese-style social credit system where only those that have the right views can fully participate in society. And I will, later on in the show, describe to you exactly how this system works in China. You can get a lot more of this here on GB News throughout the evening. The Daily Telegraph have done online a very big piece on it. I hope I can help provoke a really big national debate.